internet of things makes our cars driverless, our homes connected, our cities smart and factories run seamlessly. Artificial intelligence combined with IoT data is where the business value is created. Imagine yourself in the driverless world. I will teach you to pivot your career and innovate in your business using IoT, AI and autonomous vehicles. Let's begin your journey with me today. Hello everybody, I'm Sudha Jamte. Happy IoT Day. I have Ken Sinclair here joining us for IoT Day. Ken, tell us a little bit about how did you get started? What is your background and how did you get into IoT? Okay, I've uh, been in building automation for 50 years. Uh, it's, it's been a, a, long, a long journey. Uh, I think I first touched IoT uh, way back in the early days when we uh, created a direct digital control system at a university in Canada. And uh, we were using uh, you know, mainframe uh, computers and, uh, and building our own sensors. And this was in 1975. So uh, basically I took what I knew of the control industry and started uh, making it into uh, IFT, early IFT, uh, basically computerized control, I guess. Uh, then I moved to the west coast of Canada, and I uh, uh, got involved in the microprocessor industry, and uh, that was quite hot uh, in Western Canada. And uh, we built some companies like Delta Control and uh, Reliable. Uh, I was a consultant at that time, and so we were specifying uh, stuff, and they were actually supplying things. So I've actually worked in the industry as a consultant and energy uh, energy consultant, automation energy consultant. And then when we retired, uh, we started automated buildings. And uh, it's been 20 years in our retirement project. So we've had 20 years of automated buildings and 30 plus years of, uh, of building automation consulting work. So the controllers had to be made out of physical devices. So they had levers and sparkets and basically ran with air and pneumatic kind of systems. And uh, once the uh, direct digital industry uh, revolution hit, then it completely changed how this was all done. But of course, what it did is it opened up a whole bunch of new players and it let it, the IT people come into the industry. And it had been very hel uh, held close uh, by these major uh, contract, major suppliers, vendors. Tell me about when you said you had these four players and they brought in automation. Uh -huh. um, are they equipment ma manufacturers? Are these equipments used in buildings? What does the value chain of a building look like? The major equipment was was done by other people, carriers and trains, and uh, but the actual control was done by companies like Johnson, Honeywell, Powers, uh, Siemens. Uh, although Siemens wasn't called that in the early days. Uh, so, so it was an actual industry and I was actually trained in that industry. I was trained by Johnson Controls. And so they build control systems? Yes. So they manage high vac and everything else in buildings? Correct, and had done that since the middle 1800s. Oh, wow. It was all, it's, it's, yeah, we've had, automatic, we've had automated buildings forever almost. And uh, the pneumatic, the first pneumatic systems uh, go, go back to the turn of the century. So I know of many people who started uh, with IoT from control systems like you. For mm -hmm. me, I came from technology, e-commerce, from eBay. And so my initial view of IoT was towards wearables and consumer tech. And it's expanded over the years. So I think of buildings as smart buildings. And... You know, we talked about AI in buildings and uh, all kinds of automation of data so that you can manage energy in the building. So help us understand what is automated buildings and is that smart building or is the connected building different from an automated building? I think probably the best way to describe it is it's, it's been a journey. And uh, so, so it basically, we figured out how to do that. So when the revolution occurred in the early 80s when we moved to direct digital control. And so then, I don't think any of the buildings ever attempted to be smart before that time. Uh, 
then everybody got the idea, well, if it's, got, if it's being run by a computer, it must be smart. And of course, that wasn't quite true, but uh, we were getting there and we've, we've been struggling, struggling with that word. I don't think we've ever really achieved it. And you can see the future is smart, the book up there. Yes. Um, I had a live stream, um, David Stephenson, the author of Future is Smart, a democratization of data, that's his life calling. And so his book, The Future is Smart, uh, came out recently and mm -hmm. he did an interview and we- I watched that actually, I just, just listened to it just uh, last night, yeah. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. So we were talking about smart means connected. So mm -hmm. here we are talking about automated buildings, they are not yet connected. So when did uh, they become connected and did connected is what got them towards IOT? I'm trying to get a timeline here. Yeah, we actually have a, on our site, we have a 20 year evolution, which is kind of interesting. You, you can kind of fly over and uh, we basically pull out uh, what we think are some of the pivotal points. And I remember seeing that. You shared that with the council. I remember seeing that. Yeah, and what, what you find there is that a lot of it is around standards, like what made a change. BACnet made a big change. Uh, Haystack is now making a new chain. Who brought the open standards and was BACnet the first one? We have an organization called ASHRI, which is the American Society of Heating and Refrigeration and Air Conditioning Engineers. And it's sort of, our, our, it's the, the standards that's in a lot of building codes and stuff that things have to be built to ASHRI standards. And the BACnet became out of that. It was a painful process. It took 20, 20 years plus to, uh, to get from, from the drawing board. And we have stories of that uh, on our site, how that actually happened. So that, that kind of radically changed the industry because it opened it up and it allowed people to build these products who weren't the majors. Before, all, before you had to, to get into the business, you had to be able to build these controls. So there was like a big capital investment to get started. Once it was DDC, you could go out buy a microprocessor and we almost had the opposite problem for the first few years. We had just a merry, just in a mess of, uh, I call it awful mated, awful mated buildings uh, when, when we had uh, devices that were really not uh, worthy of running buildings, but uh, uh, somebody built them and they were cheap and we used them. So it, it, it had to all settle out, which I think is true of any new technology. And in, in inside of all of this, the connection just kind of came along. There was sort of the first, the first step, of course, was the, uh, the DDC revolution. And then the next one was the web revolution, where we started overlaying these controllers on, on the internet. That was probably our first uh, movement to connection. And then I think what's happened is we've now, people are so, uh, involved in their buildings through social media that in the old days we would have a thermostat on the wall and uh, we set it and that's the temperature you got and if, if you tried to mess with it we used to put a box over it so you couldn't mess with it but those days are gone forever and and in the uh, in the development of, uh, of a software company like Comfy which is right out of uh, uh, near you guys there and it's just been bought by Siemens a big control company yeah. And uh, it's a system where it actually lets the, more or less the people vote on whether it's too hot, too cold, and it starts to bring the human interface into it. Then I think the buildings are, they're not really getting smart. They're just having a little bit of empathy. And I think uh, the first thing we have to do to get to smart is we have to somehow learn how to to materialize or not uh, quantify, I guess, this uh, empathy. And uh, we're, we're still scratching our heads on how to do that. But we've got lots of ideas and we're working on it. And our, our, uh, our collision with the uh, IT and recently you and I's collision of the, uh, of the uh, autonomous car and our static building, uh, you know, showing up with a uh, battery for storage. Yeah, the V2G you know. article, the vehicle to grid article that I wrote for your uh, magazine. Yeah, yeah, that was great. So, so that, that whole connection. But I think the other thing that we're learning from the autonomous car is this whole, it's not just as simple as taking over driving of the car. There's all these emotions you have to deal with and, and uh, interactions. And I think we've got a lot to learn about that uh, before we actually get to the autonomous buildings. You Folks, have building automation. Do you have like a, 
we have our own data, cup. You have products, like, you have entrepreneurs, do you have like open data projects from the, some city? All of them will qualify as IoT. Toronto has a lot of stuff uh, going on. We have lots of our own uh, auto automation companies in Canada that have that have done very well. Ironically enough, some of them have been sold to international companies, which is uh, is basically their goal. I think is to to create a great company and and sell out. We still have a few uh, private ones, like Reliable Control, is a local company here that has done uh, extremely well, and uh, they seem to wish to uh, contain their. Uh, their identity, but they're they're more of a control uh, building automation company. I wouldn't want to call them an IT company, which is an interesting thing. Is at what point does does an automation company become an IT? And that's a bit why I'm I, I bring this distinction of automated intelligence versus uh, artificial yeah. intelligence is basically at the best we're doing is is automating intelligence and then we're also starting to work with the uh, the autonomous um, interactions in the building yeah and, uh, those are the areas that we're we're hard at trying to discover and what we're doing is we're seeing that uh, there's a lot of new IT devices that are able to give us a lot of information that we couldn't get before uh, the cost of sensors is really changing our industry because sensors are becoming much more sophisticated and they, uh, they basically, uh, the price has dropped. Uh, the interface to our devices is in the fact that we can use voice. Voice becomes one of the most uh, cost effective uh, methods of, of setting up some of these controllers because other than that, you need some kind of a touch screen, which is not cheap. And uh, so actual actual voice, you bring it out of the box and uh, you turn it on and it starts asking you questions and you answer the questions and it sets itself up, you know, something like, uh, uh, <clears throat> Hey Google or uh, Alexa. Yeah. So we're starting to see that becoming part, like we have thermostats now that have Alexa as part of them. And we're starting to see an integration of IOT. Um, but is that an IOT company? And it's not really, it's a building automation company that, that is starting to use IoT techniques. That's fine. Maybe. So what we did on our IoT day, I, so our, our, our spin on it is, is uh, desirable, delightful, diverting disruption. <laughs> and, a lot of these. <laughs> and so, so kind of play with that a bit. And uh, uh, disruption is an opportunity to question what we are doing and why we are doing it. IoT provides us a new way of doing it. We need not to just watch this process of disruption, we need to be the disruption. And in a recent disruption has been the collision of the autonomous car with our buildings, which is depicted by the queen of disruption, Suda. Thank you, it's making me blush. Yeah, but anyway, so we, we chat a little bit about that. And what I do is I link to our, our articles because that is like, that article was a big disruption for us. The, uh, the one that actually showed the, uh, uh, leaf, uh, a leaf plugged into our buildings. Uh, I think we all thought about it on the home basis, but hadn't seen it uh, so much on the building basis. But uh, that was that was a great. And then also some of the work that you guys were doing. I thought that was great. We've kind of pulled that in. And uh, the other one we've done is we've created a, a thing called getting a hold on it which is, uh, and of course the play is on it is IT. And uh, it's disruption is everywhere and open is on our mind and in our software and hardware. Auto reactic is, and do it yourself, is how we learn. And here's some resources to help you on your digital transformation. So I did a poll of our young uh, editors, which we just brought on for uh, less than, less than 40 and some less than 30. And we asked the question, how'd you get so smart? Uh, and the answer is common. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a Nike approach. It's just, just do it. You just learn what you need to know. And uh, yeah, it's, it, you, you, we cannot, our industry and, and the high of tea industry or the autonomous car industry, you really can't teach anybody. All you can do is, is give them access to uh, the places to learn and they've got to be autodidactic to basically make that happen. Okay. Uh, 
yep, we're we're excited about uh, IoT Day. Uh, it's it's a fun a fun day. The whole idea is that we should all just get together and talk, as you and I have just done about yep. uh, the collision of all of these things and uh, and how disruption is a good thing, and we should get out there and get involved. Uh, Automated buildings has been online for 20 years, which is, uh, I think we're kind of proud of that. Uh, it's a long time. So our first articles are, are still there. And we have a couple of flyovers that uh, one comes at it from an evolution of smart buildings. Uh, another one comes at it uh, from all of our issues, over 200 issues that are online. And another one goes way back to uh, a collaboratory and uh, uh, another thing I should have probably talked a little bit about is the uh, community of practice, uh, which is is when we take a look at, look at our industry, that's actually been the bits and pieces that have actually pulled us together is we get these communities of practice, whether they revolve around standards or whether they revolve around uh, uh, products or whether they revolve around uh, methods of doing things and we we meet these people and when we connect with them we inherit the almost the uh, combined intelligence of the community and so it allows us very quickly to grow and learn and once we do that then we can basically turn the procedure around and create our own communities of practice and I'm sure you're doing that in, in the area you're working as well, as you have strong communities of practice that you've been following, and now you've got enough knowledge that you're actually reassembling them and creating your own communities of practice and having people follow those. And I think that's the building blocks of, of the virtual world moving forward. <laughs> you know. so. so we should wrap up. This has been so much fun. Enjoy IoT Day. Ken will be back for part two to talk about how to define empathy as a business value for buildings. And see you online at driverlessworldschool.com.